uh, standing here in front of this podium right now. I was at the uh, uh, County Commission office this morning for the Community Investment Tax and show our district support of CIT. The next agenda item was around our millage referendum and I was absolutely shocked, um, puzzled at the conversation that was happening at the County Commission today. Today's decision by the Board of County Commissioners is extremely disappointing to the teachers, principals, assistant principals, and support staff in our district, as well as the students, parents who count on our local schools to educate their children. I think we can all agree that every child deserves the best classroom experience possible. This millage would have been earmarked primarily to pay our teachers, bus drivers, custodians, school principals, and other staff a more competitive wage, meaning more high quality teachers would be in the classroom educating our students. It's puzzling to all of us, puzzling to all of us in Hillsborough County Public Schools as to why four county commissioners are taking the choice out of the hands of the voter. Our school board voted in April to invest in our students and allow voters to make a decision. County commissioners have an administrative duty to place the referendum on the ballot, but some are refusing to do their job. We appreciate the commissioners who agree with us that the voters should decide. I have now requested a special called school board meeting for Tuesday, July 23rd at 2 p.m. for the school board to authorize me to seek all appropriate legal action to ensure the millage referendum is on the ballot November 5th of this year. Yeah. We'll be asking a judge to compel the county commission to do their statutorily required duty. I'm gonna say that one more time. I've now requested a special called school board meeting for next Tuesday at 2 p.m., special called board meeting 2 p.m., for the school board to authorize me to seek all appropriate legal action to ensure that millage referendum is on the ballot November 5th. And we'll be asking that judge to compel the county commission to do their statutorily required duty. I'd like at this time to call uh, Rob Creek President of the Hillsborough Classroom Teachers Association to come up. Rob. Good afternoon, everyone. Rob Crete, career educator. Make no mistake, the students of our district, the young people of our district lost today. They cannot wait two years to have a quality teacher in front of them. They cannot wait two years to have their vast needs met. They cannot wait two years to get that bus ride to school. In, our, in a post-pandemic world, we've learned that the most important factor in a child's life is the classroom experience that these students of Hillsborough County are gonna lose out on because of this decision today, okay? We need to do something. Democrats, Republicans, independents in this district believe in public education in Hillsborough, and the voters need to do something about it, and we're gonna work with you to make sure that we can do something about it. Thank you. Hi there, um, my name is Amy Marie Granger Welch. I am the VP of v Advocacy for Hillsborough County Council PTA. The Hillsborough County Council PTA stands with Hillsborough County Public Schools. We think it is reasonable to put the millage referendum question to our local voters in Hillsborough County. However, four county commissioners seem to think they should make the decision for us. Whether your student is attending a traditional public school or a charter school in Hillsborough County, the millage increase supports all of our educators and staff members that work so hard every single day here in Hillsborough. We encourage everyone to contact their county commissioner and tell them our kids can't wait. Hello, my name is Anna Corman. I'm the president and CEO of the Hillsborough Education Foundation. We are a nonprofit dedicated to supporting students, teachers, and schools. This morning, the Hillsborough County Board of County Commissioners made an unfortunate decision that will impact our community profoundly. They removed the millage from the ballot this fall. That millage, which was approved by the School Board of Hillsborough County back in April to go on the ballot, was more than just a funding measure. It was a beacon of hope for our teachers and our students. Our teachers are the backbone of our education system and their salaries have to reflect the immense value that they bring to our community. The millage was designed to address the alarming exodus of teachers in Hillsborough County, largely driven by salaries that are simply not competitive enough. Uh, we're losing teachers to neighboring counties like Manatee, Pasco, and Pinellas, all of which already have millages in place. And more importantly, it gave registered voters in Hillsborough County the power to decide this crucial issue, where it rightfully belongs. 
Now the Board of County Commissioners has postponed this until 2026, and that is simply unacceptable. That delay puts our district in a terrible position that will only hurt students at the end of the day. With over 400 vacant te uh, teaching positions, how can we hope to fill and retain those roles? Uh, I just learned today there's over 26 vacancies at Tampa Bay Boulevard alone, and that is, again, simply unacceptable for the students in this district. The Board of County Commissioners justified this decision, claiming they didn't want any confusion over the two taxes, the community investment tax and the millage. But I think it's really important for everybody to understand that these are two separate issues. The community investment tax doesn't expire until 2026. So I really am struggling to understand why the millage uh, should be the one to wait until 2026, but I digress. Um, the millage is specifically to support teacher and support staff pay. And I think it's also important to note that back in April, the county commissioners decided to reduce that 25% going to the school district to 5%. So that move along with today, I think raises a really interesting question for all of us. Do certain county commissioners truly care about public education in Hillsborough County? No, they don't. So today I call on the board of county commissioners to reconsider that decision. I urge all of you to contact your county commissioners as well to urge them to reconsider. And we need to put that millage back on the ballot for this fall, not in 2026. Hillsborough Education Foundation stands with Hillsborough County Public Schools and we will continue to advocate for what is right for our teachers and more importantly, our students in this district. Thank you. Thank you. Again, um, we're extremely disheartened and disappointed by the action taken today by the County Commission and we're going to stand up for students. We believe local voters should have the right to make this decision. At this point, I'd be happy to take absolutely any questions you may have. Superintendent, yes. Um, you know, there's going to be a vote on whether or not you're going to be able to pursue this. Can you expand a little bit on some of the legal standing that you guys think that you have to compel the commissioners to do this? Right. Our, our understanding is there is it is their administrative duty to pass. It's a pass through is what that is. It's their administrative duty. Our school board voted in April to have this on the ballot in November. Our stance, they have no right to postpone that at all. They are superseding, they're trying to take away the power of the school board by postponing that vote, and we, they, are, they have no right to do so. Our board, board voted on that in April, and it's gonna be on the ballot in November, and that's our stance. And what's puzzling all, to, all together around is that this millage referendum exists in Hernando, Pasco, Pinellas, San, uh, Sarasota, Manatee, but yet this county commission, this county, believes we shouldn't have that additional referendum. I don't take this lightly at all, this referendum. I understand what's going on in the economy, but this is about leveling the playing field for Hillsborough County Public Schools. We are not, thank you. It's about leveling the playing field and, allow, and letting our voters make that decision on that, if that one mill passes or not. And we were here in 2022 and it didn't pass. The voters made that decision. We want them to make that decision in 2024 on November 5th. And we'll do everything in our power to ensure that that's on the ballot on November 5th. Absolutely. So, I mean, it's in, in, from what I heard today, and again, Aaron, as I was sitting there listening, I, I really was taken back because this was, this is supposed to be an administrative pass through. I was there for the CIT. It is their right when that board, when our board makes that decision to place it on the ballot, in their eyes, if they can choose when it wants to go, I mean, they could choose it goes into year 2040, 2042. That's not their right or response, or that's not their right to choose when we take it. I have, we have elected officials on our school board that made that decision to leave it up to voters. It was a unanimous vote. Uh, and, and we expect that to be on the ballot on November 5th, and that's, that's our stance. They cannot just continue to keep kicking this down the road and take that, uh, take that into their hands. And this, this goes, goes beyond Hillsborough County. This is about county commissions superseding the, board of, uh, superseding the authority of our school boards. Yeah. Anna sort of addressed this. Do you feel like this is an attack on public schools in general? Ab absolutely, yes. without a doubt. Well, that I do, Aaron. This is, you know, um, we, you know, Hillsborough County, number one, we're the seventh largest school district in the nation, largest employer in Hillsborough County. We realize that we have to have more competitive wages uh, for our employees. That's why we are pursuing this, this referendum to ensure that we've got competitive wages for all of our employees. And we just, we're not on a level playing field right now and we have to be there, but I, I do feel like this is, this is an attack on public education and I will not stand for it. You estimated last week there are 500 classroom teacher vacancies. Now, if this passes, the money wouldn't arrive until a yeah. year, a year and a half down the road. But given the climate, given what happened today, what effect do you think this is going to have on you, teachers? Thank you. Where 
Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a morale issue. And if you thank you, Marlene, for mentioning that. This is, this is about morale and the, and the climate of this county. And when our county commission makes a decision like that, that uh, as mentioned earlier, let's take the CIT, which we can take in 26. Let's take that early, but let's take the millage draft running for students and let's push that off two years. Makes no sense. And again, I'm sitting here three hours later and I'm still in shock that that went down today. Can you elaborate a little bit on the shock? I mean, you came in this morning expecting to be a done deal. Yeah. Right, so we've had multiple conversations with commissioners uh, about the community investment tax. Zero conversation about the millage referendum because it is not their responsibility or right to be involved in that particular millage referendum. I had discussions with them, multiple discussions with all county commissioners around the community investment tax, which we had 25 percent back in 1996, and that number got taken down to 5 percent. So my conversation uh, with them was around that 25 percent to 5 percent and getting us to a number where we could be competitive for our capital needs. On the millage side with the referendum, it is not their job to make that decision. That's a pass through for the millage referendum. There is zero conversation with them regarding the millage referendum because it's not their job. And just to follow up on that, I see four school board members here still have the millage referendum. Yeah. Are you concerned at all about the special meeting and how that vote's going to go and whether or not you're going to be given this authority? Right. So, I mean, that's we'll, we'll call the special call board meeting, and that's uh, we'll, we'll, on that day uh, at 2 p.m., I will bring forward a recommendation. And at that time, you know, our board will have that discussion in the sunshine. Um, with all board members, so we'll just tune in at two o'clock and we'll see where that goes. But I have, I, I believe, I have full support uh, for my school board on this decision. But that'll play out uh, at two o'clock, so we'll we'll do that in the sunshine. Superintendent, beyond continuing to push to get this on this year's ballots, are there other avenues that you might consider taking to get more funding for schools? Maybe increasing the percentage that schools get of the CIT. Yeah, yeah, so the, the CIT was at 25%. They've taken that down to 5%. So that is their responsibility with the county commission is the percentage that we get in education, that 5%. For us, we've done everything that we can. That millage referendum is, is on top. We have this system in, in, in the state of Florida that uh, uh, education finance program that sets the amount that we get from the state that equalizes. Statutorily, though, it allows dis, uh, counties to levy an additional mill for additional revenue. So we are in a, on a playing field right now where we're operating with a system with every district around us. And by the way, let me add, we are the third largest school district in the state of Florida. Of the five, we are the only one without, without this additional mill referendum. And it puts us at severe competitive disadvantage. Miami-Dade and Broward approved this in 2018. Pinellas County, not the largest, they're about 100,000 students. They have had this millage referendum since the year 2004. 2004. Pasco just passed theirs in 22. Hernando passed theirs in 2020. We have some of the best employees anywhere in Hillsborough County. And it's, we're not in a fair system right now. I'm going to stand up for that. Superintendent, sorry this is uh, repetitive of, of that, but there's always a chance that this initiative, having gone to the ballot, was going to be rejected by voters. How much of a backup plan was this district working on? Um, oh, great question. So this is, this is a supplement. So this millage referendum, if this would go to ballot and pass, this is every four years. So every four years it goes back to voters. This is a supplement. Uh, all this for operating costs is a supplement on the salary. So we operate within our means, within our budget. This would be additional dollars that we would utilize as a supplement for our employees. So it has nothing to do with how we operate uh, our budget on a day-to-day -day basis. These are supplemental dollars we use uh, to make our wages competitive. Yeah, so we, we just, we have an actual a proposal that's going to our board on July 23rd. We just actually finished up with our contract negotiations to settle. We did the, with class, yeah, with our classroom association as much as we could. We finally, we got our, we got our, our, our new teacher salaries raised to $48,000. Um, by the way, Manatee starts at 55, some others 57, so you can see the shortfall we're at. So as we look to bring in new teachers into our district, it is hard for Hillsborough County Public Schools to compete for new teachers when the starting salary for us is 48, and, and when districts around us are at 55, 56, 57 thousand dollars. So that this number leads to our, our, our vacancies. If you have a choice of, of where you want to teach, if I'm 23 years old, seven thousand dollars is a lot of money, a lot of money. So that's, that's the situation we are, we're in right now. But we have to answer the question, we have approximately 500 teacher vacancies. These are classroom teacher vacancies. We have about 140 bus driver vacancies currently. And remember, this millage referendum is to support all employees, including teachers, bus drivers, all the support staff. It takes everyone uh, to support our students in schools. Um, 
but it's, it's, in, it, the literature is clear as we look to, to increase student achievement to the number one most important factor is a highly effective teacher over time, and that's what this Millage referendum aims to hit. Any other questions? All good? Thank you, guys. I, I, oh, I, I one, more, one more, please. Uh, yep. You know, Well, that's a good, yeah. That's, that's just got to be number one. Uh, this is up there for me. Yeah, it's got to be number one for me. I think this is, I think I, 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 the word I came back with earlier today was, you know, this was almost unprecedented that they would step in the middle of this and take this away um, from our students. So unprecedented, this is up there, number one. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.